let me spend a couple of minutes now just talking about uh, the armamentarium uh, necessary for chair-side ceramic staining. The first thing I want to cover is the staining palette. And this is a fairly critical part of our armamentarium. Uh, this happens to be a staining palette that we use as a study professional that we get from Vita. And uh, I arrange it in a, a fairly specific way. So let me just kind of uh, review uh, how and why I organize it the way I do. Uh, if you look at the top row, this top left actually is white, which may be difficult to see on the monitor, but we got white and green. Uh, these obviously are for op opacities. Uh, green uh, is sometimes a color modifier that's useful to uh, get some of those CD shades. Uh, doesn't, we don't, don't use it too much, but occasionally we need to use it. Uh, we've got uh, what I call value modifiers over here on the right side. We've got our gray. Uh, we've got our uh, lilac or violet. Uh, and then we've got blue. And then essentially through the entire middle are just a number of different uh, hue and chroma modifiers uh, that are kind of in the basic tooth shade range. Now I like to organize it with a very common color or, a, or what I call a good starting point. And if you look at this uh, bottom left hand corner, this is a color called ochre. And ochre is a kind of a yellow orangey color. And while natural teeth aren't necessarily this color, I, I usually start with this color and then I modify. So if I need to uh, make it a little more yellow dominant, I'll go up into this uh, top row. So we're looking at yellow, yellow greens, ye yellows and yellow greens as we go to the left here. And then if I want to make it a little more brown dominant, we're going to go th down through this bottom row. Uh, I want to emphasize that Ceramic staining really is an art form. So this is our, our, artist's, our artist palette, if you will. And when we begin our process of uh, modifying a ceramic restoration in the mouth, we simply take our palette of colors and then we start to do uh, whatever uh, modification is necessary to, uh, again, um, uh, perfect the aesthetic results of our ceramic restoration. The other parts of our armamentarium consist of uh, a staining liquid. Uh, this happens to be a staining liquid uh, that I get from uh, Avita again. And you want to make sure that you get a staining liquid for uh, extrinsic staining. Uh, extrinsic staining liquid contains glycerin or some, some component uh, that won't dry out. So these stains will stay fluid for uh, for many, many months. They'll settle and you have to remix them, uh, but you don't constantly have to remix them. Intrinsic staining liquids dry out very quickly. And uh, the other thing you'll find is when, we, when stains dry, and we'll show you that when we put it in the oven, when stains dry, they get very chalky. So you want to uh, maintain that, uh, that liquid without uh, evaporation so you can maintain uh, the ability to visualize the correct color. The next thing we need to have in our armamentarium are at least a couple of uh, high quality uh, sable or uh, synthetic sable brushes. Uh, it's critical that you have brushes that are dedicated to ceramic staining. We need brushes uh, that have good bristles, that are nice and straight. We need one that's really small uh, for doing uh, uh, really the majority of our work is done with a smaller brush. But we also need a big brush uh, for spreading the particles. And we talked a little bit yesterday about uh, that part of the theory of color. So you need the ability to spread, uh, spread the particles evenly over a large surface when you're doing generalized shade modifications, which we'll demonstrate. So we need a, good, a couple of high quality brushes. Clinically, our armamentarium, we need to have an explorer, obviously to check your restoration, so that should be pretty much standard. But we'll also show you how to use the explorer to uh, remove a restoration in the mouth. And once you've got the restoration in the mouth and you've applied stain, it is a little bit tricky to remove them, so we'll demonstrate that. Uh, we also need to have uh, a hemostat uh, to grab it with and, and possibly a cotton forceps to grab it with uh, to, um, when we remove it from the mouth. Uh, we'll also use this hemostat uh, when we do our initial drying in the oven. So, you know, you can see our armamentarium isn't really vast, and many of the things that you will be required to use are part of your normal ar armamentarium uh, in your dental office. When you're mixing the ceramic stains on your palate, uh, the most common error that most people will make is they'll uh, mix them too runny. And if you mix your stains too runny, 
they're going to run all over the restorations. Uh, they're going to run while you're trying to take it to the staining oven, uh, and uh, you'll have a very difficult time with the procedure. So our goal really is to mix our ceramic stains, and we want them to be just about the consistency of a very thick honey. Uh, 